Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is November 24th and this is my weekly shop update. Now I didn't get as much time out here in the shop as I normally do this past week. Uh, my day job has been pretty busy so I've been working a lot more with that. Uh, so I just didn't have as much time to get here in the shop. So because of that I just have a few things to touch on today and then I'm going to get into a little bit of a joinery demo um, in a little bit. Uh, earlier this week I came out in the shop and I was working on a new joint that I have never tried and I had really never seen before and it is called, uh, let me look it up and I'm sure I'm going to butcher the name just a second. I'm getting a lot of comments about my hair being crazy. <laughs> it gets crazy this time of year. Alright, so this is a Japanese joint, it's called the Kawaii Sujit or Sujite, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. If anyone knows for sure please let me know. I'd be really happy to know how to actually say that properly so I don't sound like an idiot <laughs> anymore. Uh, so this is as far as I got, it's not complete yet, uh, but the whole idea with this joint here is that this, the, um, the mating piece is cut exactly the same as this one and it can mate in three different orientations. It can either meet uh, coming down like this and actually seat into here or it can come in from this side or from this side. So it's really cool, it's really complicated. Uh, a lot of the problems I have with this joint is just getting my mind around what's going on geometrically in three-dimensional space. And yeah, there's a lot going on here. So even with the layout, I still, I still got a headache, honestly. I, I was out here at night, and I got this far, and I was just thinking about like what is going on here, and then I was just, my brain just started hurting. So that was the first time that I actually left the shop at night with a headache because I was thinking too hard. So, so that was very interesting. So I'm doing a video about this whole process, my learning experience with it. So far it's going all right. I just have to get back out here and uh, get cutting. It's uh, pretty complicated. <laughs> so the other thing I worked on out here in the shop this week is the secretary uppercase. Again, one of the things I did was I finalized the joinery on the face frame and I glued it up. So this is all glued up and ready to be attached to the face frame once I cut the, um, the profiles down here for the shell carvings and the top of the doors. And then on the main case I got the vertical dividers installed and I'm ready to cut the horizontal divider that goes between the two vertical dividers. <laughs> so today I thought I'd do a little demo on basically stop dado joinery and then lapping your, your shelf pieces over the end of the dado to hide it. So this is how I like to cut my stop dados. I like to cut them inside the case so I know that my, my dado slots are going to be completely parallel to a, to a reference surface, which in this case is my lower horizontal divider. So what I've done is I've drawn on my, get that core all the way, I've drawn on the actual board where I want my dado to go. In this case I am doing one that's 5 eighths of an inch wide and I just marked that here on the piece. And what I've done here is I've just made a spacer block. I didn't have a scrap piece of plywood wide enough, so all I did here is I used this piece with my, this is another piece of three quarter inch stock here, and the shim, and that one riding up against the router base puts my bit right where I want it. So from here I can just make the cut. I also have my stop point marked on here, so that's where I'm going to stop my router while I'm cutting. All right, now I'll flip the case around and cut it on the other side as well. So I just milled up the panel. I cut it to width and I need to cut it to length now. I also left it a little thick so we can sneak up on the fit in the next step. So to cut it to a length, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it in the bottom dado and then use my knife to mark the top cut location. And I'm going to cut this panel so that it is about a 32nd of an inch shorter than this distance. That will make it easier to slide in and out. So I'll take this over to the table saw and just cut it to length. Okay, so now the panel is cut to length and I have a little bit of a gap when I place it in between the two dados, about a 32nd of an inch. So now I can work on fitting the panel to the groove, or to the dado in this case. When I milled up the panel I left it about Oh, maybe a 64th of an inch too big for this dado. And I'm going to sneak up on the fit with a hand plane. 
Now to do this, I'm not going to plane the whole surface, I'm just going to plane the area where it interfaces with the joint. So that's going to create basically not a flat panel anymore, it's going to create sort of a, a cup panel, so to speak. Which is fine in this case, this is going to be a shelf. So what I'll do is I'll attack the bottom side of the shelf with the hand plane to put that, um, that stock removal on the bottom where it won't matter. When it gets to the point where it fits, but it's still fairly snug, that's when I'll stop with the hand plane, and then I'll hit it with the sander, and then I'll clean up my plane marks, and then just bring it down just old enough so that it fits in perfectly into that dado. Now is where we can begin the lapping process. So what I want to do is have this shelf actually extend over onto the um, vertical divider here. So what I'm going to do is mark the location of where this vertical divider intersects with this uh, shelf here. So to do that I'm just going to take my chisel and I'm going to run it flat against this vertical divider and this slice across marking on the shelf where the cut needs to be to notch out so it overlaps this um, vertical divider. And I'll do that on the top as well. And then looking at the back, I want to mark, I want to measure out how far in this shelf needs to go. Okay, so now I can start marking out what needs to be removed. Uh, you can see my knife line or my chisel line from when I marked it on the case. And I'm just going to carry this line down the sides. And I know I need to come down an inch. So I'll mark that down here. I'll take my saw and just remove the bulk of the waste. And then here I'll just take my chisel, set it in my bottom depth line, and just knock that piece out. Now I can use my smaller chisels to just work back to my lines. So this is what a dull chisel cuts like. I was going to sharpen this, but I thought it would be a little more beneficial to see exactly how poorly a dull chisel performs. Okay, and here's the finished joint. You'll see I did undercut here. I exaggerated that quite a bit just to show you that you really want to get this middle material all the way because you don't want it to be the other way. You don't want it to be proud of the surface. So this is ready to go. I'll cut the other one and we can try the fit. Okay, now I can go for a little test fit. So there you have it, a little bit more of a live build demo kind of uh, experience. I hope you enjoyed this, hopefully you learned maybe something or maybe reinforced some technique you might have known at some point. Uh, obviously there's different ways of doing this, as with everything in woodworking, this is just how I like to do it. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for this week. Thanks as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, Please leave me a comment, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy woodworking.